since Bernie Sanders dropped out of the 2020 Democratic Party primary race and Joe Biden now really has no competition, well, now the mainstream media is conspicuously talking about Tara Reid's Me Too story. They're bringing up the rape allegation against Joe Biden all of a sudden. Interesting how that works, right? They ignored it for weeks. And now that uh, voters seemingly have nowhere else to go, they have nothing to lose, so now they're going to do their job. The Washington Post talked about this story. NBC News also talked about this story. And, you know, really all of these organizations, they followed the lead of the New York Times, who I believe was the first major outlet post-Dem primary to break their silence. And it took them so long to report on this that they literally had to put out a separate article explaining why it took them 19 fucking days to talk about this. So they're definitely not politically motivated in any way, shape, or form. Nothing suspicious to see here. Now, the most disgusting part about the New York Times' coverage of this is that they literally put out this now-deleted tweet where they say no other allegation about sexual assault surfaced in the course of our reporting, nor did any former Biden staff corroborate Reid's allegation. We found no pattern of sexual misconduct by Biden beyond hugs, kisses, and touching that some previously said made them uncomfortable. That's a big yikes from me. I'm going to read that last line to you again. We found no pattern of sexual misconduct by Biden beyond hugs, kisses, and touching that some previously said made them uncomfortable. I wonder if they're taking a side here. This is not objectivity. This is not real journalism. They're very clearly taking a side. And it's embarrassing. This is mask off for corporate media. They refused to cover a story about sexual assault and Joe Biden until Bernie Sanders dropped out. Now they're all covering it simultaneously. That tells you a lot about the media landscape in American politics. It tells you that we don't actually have a media who's going to speak truth to power. They are stenographers to power. And if you weren't convinced of that before, this should convince you of it. Now, what's amazing to me about this article is that they go out of their way to make sure that you know, quote, President Trump has been accused of sexual assault and misconduct by more than a dozen women who have described a pattern of behavior that went far beyond the accusations against Mr. Biden. So just remember, folks, that even though you may be a little bit repelled by the reality that Joe Biden is now an alleged rapist, just remember that Donald Trump is also a rapist, and he is a worse rapist. He's done more rape, so Biden is the lesser of two rapists. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Now, because I'm not a hack, because I actually am trying my best to be objective, I do want to share a portion of their article where they do do some digging which I believe was previously called investigative journalism, something that's lacking nowadays, unless you're in indie media. But nonetheless, here's where they actually kind of vet the claims made by Tara Reid, something they should have done long ago. But nonetheless, this is what they say. On Thursday, Miss Reid filed a report with Washington, D.C. police saying she was the victim of a sexual assault in 1993. The public incident report provided to the Times by Miss Reid and the police does not mention Mr. Biden by name, but she said the complaint was about him. Miss Reid said she filed the report to give herself an additional degree of safety from potential threats. Filing a false police report may be punishable by a fine and imprisonment. Miss Reed, who worked as a staff assistant helping manage the office interns, said she also filed a complaint with the Senate in 1993 about Mr. Biden. She said she did not have a copy of it and such paperwork has not been located. The Biden campaign said it did not have a complaint. The Times reviewed an official copy of her employment history from the Senate that she provided showing she was hired in December 1992 and paid by Mr. Biden's office until August of 1993. The seven other women who had complained about Mr. Biden told the Times this month that they did not have any new information about their experience to add, but several said they believed Miss Reed's accounts. So this is basically what was expected from mainstream news outlets. You vet these claims, give us the details, give us the consistencies 
the uh, facts of the matter, if there's any inconsistencies, and let us decide for ourselves. For me personally, I definitely believe Tara Reid because there's no evidence of the complaint. They can't find the record, no paper trail, and Biden is denying it, but she's saying it's true and she did work for him. And there is a history of inappropriate behavior with Joe Biden. It is not normal for him to touch girls and women on camera in the way that he does. I, I think that that is completely inappropriate, beyond the pale, over the line. So I believe Tara Reid. But the point is that we need the mainstream media to do their job, and it shouldn't have taken 19 days. The New York Times should not have put out a report where they have to explain why it took them 19 days. Do you understand how troubling this is? This is deeply, deeply problematic. Because it tells people that they can't trust the media because the media is in cahoots with the Democratic Party. And if it's not the Democratic Party, then they may be in cahoots with the Republican Party, OAN, Fox News. So we have different competing media outlets who are just playing team politics, right? They will condemn something that is, I think, universally egregious, rape, sexual assault, unless... Someone from their team is accused of it. Here's a new proposal. How about we just treat all sexual assault allegations identical? Pretend like the individual who's being accused isn't a Democrat or Republican. They're just apolitical. And we vet those claims accordingly. Why don't we just try doing that just for once? This story, if this doesn't kill what little trust you had in mainstream media, nothing else would. And guess what? MSNBC finally chose to talk about this story. They definitely weren't waiting for Bernie Sanders to drop out of the race, guys. Nothing, you know, uh, suspicious here. There's no conspiracy. And I don't believe they actually, you know, co collaborated and were in cahoots and they're like, okay, well, we'll cover it at the same time once Bernie's out of the race. We just know that uh, everyone who works at these outlets... These are establishment shills, for lack of a better word. They do the bidding of the establishment. They wouldn't have a job in these outlets if they didn't always do what the establishment wanted. And sure, there's a couple of people who do good work. Jeff Stein at the Washington Post is one example. But, you know, I, I truly believe that they keep these types of people there just so they can maintain their credibility. We'll publish, you know, an op-ed from a progressive time and again. But most of our work, the aggregate, if you kind of step back and look at it all, will be disproportionately favorable to the establishment. Predominantly one party in the establishment. And that really is sickening. So I'm going to play this clip from MSNBC for you. And it's relatively long, but I'm playing the entire clip for or almost the entire clip for you. Because it, it demonstrates the inherent bias here. And what I believe is a prime example of political priming. Take a look. Tonight, we have new reporting about a claim of sexual assault against Joe Biden from when he served in the U.S. Senate in the 90s. And tonight, his campaign is strongly denying that claim, calling it untrue. NBC's Mike Memoli and Ali Vitale join us live with their latest reporting. Uh, Mike, uh, let me start with you and, and let's let's start from a, a, a broad lens as we then you know narrow in on the new on the new reporting that you guys have been doing here. Uh, it's been quite a week uh, for Joe Biden. I want to take a moment and you know digest that with Bernie Sanders deciding uh, to step back a much different uh, sort of landscape for him than the one Hillary Clinton faced in 2016, but uh, he also has a number of challenges ahead of him, uh, including this, uh, you know, a president who's on TV day in and day out, uh, as well as uh, what you guys have been working on. This is a this allegation. Uh, can you walk us through kind of where the campaign stands right now, what their thinking is in terms uh, of how this is all going to unfold in the coming months? Well, Casey, to say the obvious that this is not the kind of campaign that Joe Biden thought he'd be running at this stage. Uh, it is interesting to note that Joe Biden can now lay claim to being the apparent Democratic nominee at an earlier state than anybody since John Kerry in 2004. We'll remember that Barack Obama in 2008 and then Hillary Clinton in 2016. It took until June or even later in the case of Hillary Clinton for them to really have that moment uh, where they were in the minds of Democrats widely seen as the nominee. But now, of course, Joe Biden is campaigning from his basement in Wilmington. I'm coming to you from my apartment here in Washington. This is all a very different setup. 
But the challenges are the same for Joe Biden at this point. One is he has to work very hard to unite the Democratic behind, uh, Party behind him. We've seen him attempt to do that, including this week, by embracing some policy proposals uh, that were at least a nod towards uh, the progressive wing in the party. In this case, this week, uh, he, to, dealing with a, a free a, a, a form of a free college tuition and release, uh, relieving student debt. He also has to choose a running mate, of course, and that's going to be something that we talk a lot more about in the coming weeks as Biden is set to announce uh, his formal vetting committee, the team that will help him go through that process. We're also not seeing money raised in the same way that it usually is. And so the Biden campaign has been working to try to get him out into different forums, different venues uh, via the technology that we're all using at the same time. Uh, but clearly, there's a lot of learning process still underway in that regard. Yeah. Ali Vitali, let me go to you on this story that you and uh, Mike have been reporting out. I know you uh, and NBC News spoke uh, with Tara Reid uh, on multiple occasions. Uh, what did you learn uh, from her, and how is the Biden campaign handling this in this moment? Yeah, Casey, Tara Reid was a staff assistant in Joe Biden's office from December of 1992 until mid-1993. During that time, she says that she was sexually harassed and sexually assaulted by the then senator. And this is a story that has evolved, Casey. In April of 2019, Reid came forward saying that she had been inappropriately touched by Biden. At the time, she was one of several women who came forward with similar allegations. And you'll remember, Biden, who he himself calls him he calls himself a tactile politician, he said that he would be more mindful of personal space at the time. Then last month, Reid came forward with a sexual assault allegation. In a podcast interview, she said that she had been sexually assaulted by then-Senator Biden in a corridor of the Capitol Hill complex in the spring of 1993 when she brought him a gym bag. NBC News has spoken with Reid multiple times since she made those allegations. We've also spoken with five people with whom Reed says she told varying degrees of detail about this story over time. Three of them on the record deny knowing or remembering those conversations with her, but two of her friends tell me that they remember her telling her, telling them about these incidents, one at the time, another says that Reed told her in the mid-2000s. And look, Biden's campaign for their part is saying the alleged assault, quote, absolutely did not happen. I'm reading a little bit more of a statement that we have from Kate Bedingfield, they say he firmly believes that women have a right to be heard and heard respectfully. Such claims should also be diligently reviewed by an independent press. What is clear about this claim, they say, it is untrue. And Casey, the most recent action that Reed took is going and filing a police report here in D.C. with D.C. Metro Police. She did that on Thursday night. She said that it was for an assault that happened sometime in the spring of 1993. But I would point out that those claims are obviously past the time that they can be prosecuted. The statute of limitations is up on that. And it also is illegal to falsify police reports. That's what we know at this point, Casey. So... That entire video was five minutes long. It was over five minutes, but the portion that I played for you was five minutes long. And they didn't get to Tara Reid's allegations until the third minute almost of that clip. So after they basically explained to you how Joe Biden is the presumptive nominee, Bernie's out, and if you're a Democratic Party primary voter, you have nowhere else to go. Then after they reminded you of that, they told you about Tara Reid's allegations. Nothing to see here, folks. Totally not suspicious. They're totally not in the tank for one candidate over the others. If we don't come up with some sort of plan to decommodify media or at least have a really strong alternative that we build up over the years, then leftist policies and leftist candidates will be permanently doomed because the mainstream media is not on your side. And once in a while, they may placate you. Every now and again, they'll do a really great segment that I even can commend. But at the end of the day, they aren't looking out for you. At the end of the day, they're not doing their job, which is to act as a check on power, government authority. They have an agenda because when you live in a capitalist system, 
then the goal of a news organization is not to produce the news. It's not to make voters more educated before they make their decisions in elections. It is to increase profits, to appease shareholders. That is the goal here. It is to make money. And it just so happens that it's more lucrative for the New York Times and MSNBC to be completely in the tank with the Democratic Party because the same entities that advertise on MSNBC, the same ones that you see advertise on the Washington Post's page are the same corporations that donate to the Democratic Party. It's one big club and uh, you ain't in it, as George Carlin would say. So this story is really, really despicable. It's morally reprehensible and... It's not like everyone is required to believe Tara Reid's story. I do. But the point is that voters are supposed to be given the details. And they're supposed to be able to make that decision themselves, whether or not to believe her, based on the evidence that is presented to them objectively by the media. But we did not get that. This uh, was a botched story. And we can't forget this. You have to remember that the media did this because whenever you listen to the mainstream media, you have to approach their stories with a very healthy degree of skepticism because, again, they have ulterior motives. They have agendas, and that agenda is oftentimes uh, self-interested. It seems nefarious, but really this is all about money and protecting power and protecting the status quo. Absolutely disgusting. Shame on all of these outlets. They don't get any credit for covering this 19 days after it came out. They don't get any credit for covering this once Bernie Sanders dropped out because it's obvious that they waited until Bernie Sanders was gone so voters wouldn't be repulsed by the details of this story and maybe vote for Bernie Sanders over Joe Biden. They know about that, right? They know. That's what they wanted. It's it's very clear. I don't think it's unreasonable for me to say that. I think it's very obvious that that was their agenda all along. And they got what they wanted. They got what they wanted. They got their, you know, favored Democratic candidate. They dragged them across the finish line. Congratulations. Good job. They don't care about the country. And if you are a lefty, this is the number one thing to keep in mind. Media is, uh, it's not going to be used at your benefit to inform you. It will be used to bludgeon you. It's another force of power that we also have to resist.